Hi there. Now what I've got here is a summary exercise which is a follow-up to a previous video tutorial that I showed you on how we go about differentiating products of functions of x using the product rule. So if you'd like to try some of these questions, if not all of them, it might be that you might not be familiar with differentiating, for instance, trigonometric functions or exponential or natural log functions. If that's the case, maybe you might want to just leave those parts of the questions out. But uh, anyway, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solutions against mine. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. So, as I say, this is using the product rule for differentiation. If you're unfamiliar with the product rule, just very briefly, here it is here. If you've got y equals two functions of x, let's call them u and v, then dy dx equals one of the functions of x, u, multiplied by the differential of the other function of x, and then plus, and then we just do it the other way around. So starting with number one then, I've got two functions of x, x cubed being multiplied by e to the power 4x. So it doesn't matter which one of these I take first of all to use as my u. I'll use the first one anyway, it will still give me the same answer at the end of the day regardless. So if I take x cubed, I've got to multiply this now by the differential of e to the 4x. Differential of e to the 4x is going to be 4e to the power 4x. And then to this we've got to add, and we just do it the other way around, I take this part, e to the power 4x, and I now multiply this by the differential of x cubed, which is going to be 3x squared. And then to tidy this up, I just expand my brackets. Put the number first, so we've got 4. Then I'm going to put x cubed and then the exponential function e to the power 4x. Next up for this term, this one will be 3x squared e to the power 4x. Okay? Number 2. Okay, we're going to have 7x as one function of x being multiplied by the other function of x, sine x. So again, for this one, to differentiate this, we're going to have, therefore, dy dx equals, and what we've got is 7x being multiplied by the differential of sine x, which is cosine x, or cos x for short. Then we've got plus, we take this part, sine x, and we now multiply it by the differential of the other part. Differential of 7x is going to be 7. And cleaning this up just gives us 7x cos x. Okay. But for this one, it gives us plus 7 sine x. All right. Number three now. Okay, this one, we're going to take 3x squared as one function of x, and the natural log of 3x plus 1 as the other function of x. So dy dx is going to be equal to the first part here, 3x squared, multiplied now by the differential of the natural log of 3x plus 1. I'm assuming that you're familiar with using the chain rule, Basically, remember if you've got to find dy by dx, it's exactly the same as doing dy by d something multiplied by the same d something by dx. And that d something I'm going to take is dt. Okay, it's as if they cancel out and giving you dy over dx. So what we have here then is the chain rule. If you're unfamiliar with this, do go back on my website, check it out, okay? Chain rule for differentiating natural log functions. 
So to differentiate the natural log of 3x plus 1, I let t be the 3x plus 1. So dy dt would be 1 over t. But t is the 3x plus 1. So we've got that as 1 over 3x plus 1. 1 over t then. OK. Now I've got to differentiate what I nominated t to be with respect to x. t was 3x plus 1, so I differentiate that with respect to x and just get 3. Chain rule then, OK, for differentiating the natural log of 3x plus 1. Then we go on and we now plus and we just take this part and we multiply it by the differential of 3x squared. So I'll put the natural log of 3x plus 1 in square brackets and we multiply this then by the differential of 3x squared, which is going to be 6x. So all I need to do is just clean this up. So we've got 3x squared times 1 times 3, which is going to be 9x squared. And it's going to be divided by 3x plus 1. And then for the last term here, we've got plus, and I'll write the 6x first of all. So we've got 6x multiplied by the natural log then of 3x plus 1. Right, the last one, number 4. I picked this one purely because, again, it's going to use the chain rule when it comes to differentiating this part, and also just tidying it up, simplifying the answer involves a little bit of work. So let's just set up our functions of x. We've got 5x cubed, say, as one function of x. And as for the other one, we'll have 2x squared minus 7 all to the power 3. So when it comes to differentiating this, we've therefore got dy by dx equals, we take the first part, 5x cubed, and we now have to multiply it by the differential of 2x squared minus 7 all to the power 3. And to do this, again, we use the chain rule. So I nominate t to be 2x squared minus 7. So I've got here t cubed. So when it comes to differentiating t cubed, I'd have 3t squared. So we're going to have 3 multiplied by t squared. t was the 2x squared minus 7. And I'm going to square that now. So I've got 3t squared. t was 2x squared minus 7. I now need to multiply it by the differential of what I nominated t to be. So if I differentiate 2x squared minus 7, I get 4x. OK, so the chain rule there for differentiating 2x squared minus 7 all to the power 3. Now we need to do this part of the product rule. So we've got plus and we've just got 2x squared now, minus 7, all to the power 3, and it's now multiplied by the differential of 5x cubed, which is going to be 15x squared. So we've got 15x squared there. So it's just a case of tidying this up now. So if we take the numbers in the first term here, 5 times 3 times 4, that's going to give us 60. Then if we take the x's here, x cubed times x, that's going to be x to the power 4. And then we've got just the bracket there, 2x squared minus 7, all squared. So that's the first term then, OK, simplified. And as for the second term, we've just got plus, and I'll put the 15x squared first, 15x squared, and then you've got the bracket 2x squared minus 7 all cubed. Now I could leave it like that, but if I'm going to simplify it fully, then across these two terms I've got common factors. I can see that I've got 15 is a common factor. It goes into the 60. x squared is a common factor. It goes into x to the power 4. And 2x squared minus 7 all squared is a common factor it goes into 2x squared minus 7 all cubed. So I've got that as my common factor. I'll just put a square bracket now. And 
To get the first term, I need a 4, so that I create 15 4s of 60. I need an x squared to bring me up to x to the power 4. I've got 2x squared minus 7 all squared already out the front here. So that's the first term inside the bracket. Now for the second term, it's going to be plus. I've already got 15x squared out the front. I just need another 2x squared minus 7. So put plus 2x squared minus 7 there and close off our bracket. So when we clean this up now, we've got 15x squared, 2x squared minus 7 all squared. And I can release the square brackets to curve brackets now. And I've got 4x squared plus another 2x squared, which is 6x squared, and then minus 7. So I hope that's given you an idea then how to go about these questions. I hope you're able to get them all right. But if not, that you're able to follow where you might have gone wrong. And I also hope that these examples give you some idea now of how you can go about handling similar ones.